Hi, this is Elizabeth at CraftsByHappyStamper.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this card in a bag or card purse, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, the dimensions are all written out on my blog that you can click on in the description below. You can see I did tear my bag a little bit on the side, but that's not shouldn't hurt. So let's get started. These are the pieces I actually used. I used Knight of Navy and a piece of designer series paper from the Birthday Bash that just retired ser um, series. So first let's make the car, um, the bag base, which this is a piece of two and a half by five and a quarter inch uh, Knight of Navy paper and I'm scoring it at a half inch on all four sides. And then after I score it at a half inch, I take my paper snips and I clip the little corner flags here just on one side doesn't matter which side you do it on and it doesn't matter really if you fold them on the inside or the outside except you won't have a perfectly symmetrical box if you tuck them in on the inside so I tuck them in on the outside so that the inside of the box is a perfect rectangle so I'm using my bone folder here to get really good nice score lines um, before I use my tape. Now I u I'm using score tape in this video, but you want to use any strong adhesive. I know Stamping Up has just come out with a similar tape as this, but I haven't gotten my new order in yet to try that. So this is just regular score tape. And for my purposes, it is sufficient. Uh, I could have used the red sticky strip tape, but that just takes so long in a video I decided not to do that. So this comes off much easier, as you can see. It's easy to pull off the pieces. And once they're pulled off, I just tuck the flaps. Now, I told you I'm doing it on the outside, which is unusual for these kind of boxes. But we're going to cover that up with designer series paper anyways. And there you go. That's my card base. So now I'm going to take the designer series paper, and I want the Na Knight of Navy stripes on the outside. So I'm taking the score tape and lining it on the bottom. You have to, this is a quarter inch score tape, but you do need to make sure that you stay within a half inch. Because if you go uh, too far above the half inch mark, it's going to be sticky on the inside of the box. So now I'm just taking off all the stickiness <laughs> after I make sure it's pressed down really well on all three sides. And I'm going to take the my box and sort of, I'm using the ruler on my mat here to sort of try to estimate what the center of the box is. You can see I'm measuring it to make sure it's four, about four and a quarter. So the, the, I don't know if you can hear my cat meowing in the background. That's serious trying to say hi. He's actually probably saying, feed me, it's dinner time. But anyways, I'm just lining up the bottom of the designer series paper with the bottom of the box and using my finger to press it down and rolling it. I don't want real crisp edges because you want it to look like a rounded purse like a purse would. And then just pressing it down. Now I'm going to uh, the inside has a seam, which with this paper you can't really see very much, but with lots of paper you can. So I took a piece of three and a half inch Knight of Navy that's a half inch wide, and I drew a little seam line, like a stitching line on it, and now I'm just gluing it on the inside to cover up that seam. So you can see that. Now I'm taking one of three pieces of Knight of Navy cardstock. They are a half inch by 12 inch. And I'm using my T ruler to estimate what the center is, but it doesn't really need to be exact. You can't really tell if it is or not. But I do want it to be in a relatively straight line. So you could see me lining it up there. It actually takes me kind of a crazy long time to line it up. And now I'm just taking my Uniball white gel pen and making stitch lines. Now this white gel pen is a pigment ink, so you want to make sure that you don't smear it. And I do pretty well on this piece. I'm going to do the same thing to all three pieces that I have like this, but um, later on you'll see me smear the stitchy marks on some of the handles. So after I do that, I tear off the back piece, and now I'm just carefully laying it at the bottom. I'm using the same part starting it at the same part where the seam is of the designer series paper. So I'm just laying it on the bottom around. It goes on very simple. And because I use a ruler, my stitch marks match up, which is really convenient. So now I'm going to do that with another piece. And I already put the stitching lines on it all. Um, I cut that out of the video. I didn't think you needed to watch me do stitching lines on three pieces of this. So I'm putting it around the top. 
and here you'll see see I didn't line it up right and I ripped it back and I didn't do it very carefully so I ripped my designer series paper a little but you can't really tell very much unless you're looking for it and of course now you'll be looking for it <laughs> and if you do a real close-up you can definitely tell <laughs> so now I'm going to show you how to make the handles this is a piece of eight and a half by two inch cardstock and what I'm doing is scoring it at a half inch but only from the one inch to the seven and a half inch mark so that leaves a one inch on each end that's not scored can you tell see that at the top and the bottom that it's not scored and now I'm going to draw stitching lines where my on either side of my score lines just roughly estimating it because this one piece is actually going to make two handles but it's easier to do all this on a bigger piece like this than it is to actually cut the handles to size on um, the smaller piece so I did my stitching lines and here's where I wasn't careful I moved my ruler over the pigment ink too quickly and I smeared them a little but it's not too bad but I did do it <laughs> so you've been warned be careful with your pigment ink pen I love this uniball one I tried the Ranger one and it I never get a consistent flow so I like this one a lot better and I got this one from Stampin Up but I'm sure you can get it elsewhere so once you draw all your lines then you want to cut the piece in half at one inch and you want to take a half inch corner rounder and round all four edges and this gives it a circular edge for the edge of the handle and then you want to put your score tape but only where the score line is so one inch to seven and a half inches you can see I didn't go all the way to the end and then you fold it over at the score mark now you don't want to crease the edges but you need to use your hand to bend the um, handle so that it curves rather than creases now I used um, a big bite to punch 8 inch holes in my um, bag as well as in my handles to attach the handles and I just guesstimated where I wanted it to be I w wasn't very exact with it um, but this would have been much easier if I had the 8 eighth inch handheld punch that Stampin Up sells and until this time I didn't realize the purpose for those handheld uh, punches but now I wish I had had them because it would have been much easier to do that now I'm just attaching the handles using the candy um, base brads from Stampin Up you could use any brad you want but you want a little bit thicker one to hold the handle sturdily and then I just took four buttons that match that I could found fine and I put two glue dots on the bottom and attach them to mount the handles and now that I've done one side I had to flip over and do the other side and you could see I've already attached it and I'm just adding my buttons now we are almost done so I think it looks pretty darn good with these buttons and I know my friend Brenda loves these fancier handles with the circles rounded so now we have one last piece of a half inch by 12 inch uh, Knight of Navy cardstock that has cross stitching around the edges uh, um, or down the center on the other side and we're going to put this on the inside and it covers up those um, brads the inside of those brads on the back of the handles so that it looks more polished and finished now you could see I'm having to maneuver the bag quite a bit because you don't want the excess piece of Knight of Navy that you haven't adhered yet to adhere to the handles or anything else inadvertently so that's the bag it's finished I didn't line up my cross stitching perfectly on the inside but I think it still looks great and you can of course see my little bit of a mistake there but thanks for joining me if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to, uh, the written out instructions on all the measurements please click on my blog it's in the description at the bottom thank you